you can't take two steps with god and expect you will see any remarkable progress you've had you, you've got to go all the way and then you'll see that there is progress tonight i want to teach on strategic kingdom influence strategic kingdom influence this teaching will bless you it will change your life strategic kingdom influence i want to teach us a major tool for kingdom advancement in the 21st century strategic kingdom influence one of the please look up especially those of us who are pastors ministries fellowships and groups i think i was uh, i don't know if it was the school of ministry students we we're having a discussion yesterday and i was telling them a true shepherd listen please a true shepherd must build people intentionally there's no lecturer who comes to the lecture hall guessing what he thinks the students should become are we together every like the students don't even know what they should become many times a few may know but the lecturer is only a lecturer because he is privy to an information he knows what the students should become if they diligently stay under his tutelage when jesus came he knew what he wanted the disciples to become he wanted them to become apostles envoys advocates of his ideology and he knew exactly what to do it's a terrible thing when a pastor is confused about the path of spiritual progress of the members meaning that he doesn't really know what builds the people he's hoping and sadly I, I say this and i'm challenging especially those of us who are men of god you don't sit down and just guess what to teach people on saturday night or sunday early in the morning you just think and say Ka, what have i not talked about character people are misbehaving in my church you now run a hammer on character and then you find out that uh, people need to learn on miracles and then you go and teach on miracles your growth will not be constructive every pastor ought to develop people in five areas number one their spiritual lives these are just um, additions that I think I should communicate before we go into our discussion tonight. Number one, our spiritual life. Any pastor, any leader that cannot guide the people God has committed to him to really know God, to come to a point where they can hear the voice of God, to come to a point where they conform to the image of the Christ, to come to a point where the average member is passionate about the things of the kingdom no matter what else you teach people if you don't bring them to a point of addiction and love and passion for god then they are not growing hallelujah yes where they seek his face where they love him genuinely not where they use him where they love him so that's the first area and that involves them being born again not just being healed they have to be saved pastors make sure the congregation of the people you are leading among other things and before other things their salvation is secured i don't care what else happened in that church if the people are not saved they are not growing praise the lord they must be saved and established in righteousness where your members become people of conviction let me tell you something i have seen congregations where the level of revelation that comes from the preacher to them is very low but i respect those congregations because the little the man of god knows he has brought his members to a point of conviction i'm irritated by an assembly that does not have values spiritual convictions it's better to be wrong about something so that even when you change you know what you left not that you are there today you think divine healing is scriptural tomorrow you are not sure today you think prosperity is good and then your man of god comes and him too he's not sure there are times you see pastors oscillating you go for a conference and hear something and you come back ship it to your congregation and teach them only for you to grow two weeks later and find out that you wouldn't have brought that revelation that way and then the members are hearing a lot of things but they are not growing 
Hallelujah. Number two, every true shepherd must be able to build people's finances. I'm absolutely convinced that a man of God who does not pay attention to the financial well-being of his congregation is not only a wicked man of God. He's not only a wicked man of God, but he's a dangerous man of God. You know why? Because the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. If you want to get the heart of a congregation focused towards God, there are certain things in their lives that can really become distractions. There is no how you want a man to serve God, lie down, you want him to give you three or four or five hours of his life, whereas he knows that his rent is due. Are we together now? And then it is also wicked. Honestly, this is my proposition. I think it is really wicked for a man of God to stand up and then say, oh, how many people are going to give one, one million naira? I was telling the school of ministry students. And then you have people come out and then they are, they are, they are offering. Now, I don't care whether the church is using their offering or not. These people give offerings every week. Even if it's five naira, it left them. Is that true? They pay their time. And then the minister of the gospel in turn is not empowering them. And so they are broke, they are failures in their offices. They are at the lower levels. They can't do nothing. They don't have options. They've not grown to a point where they can be able to say, look, I, can, I want to go to church. Somebody cover for me. No influence. Sometimes we, we teach what we call a replacement theology where we can use one dimension of the kingdom to replace the need for another. It doesn't exist. It's error. And a man of God can be so bold in error and mislead people. Many pastors who don't pay attention to the finances of their members are doing well themselves. They are doing well because they are offering spiritual value and the members sow into their lives. The members maybe pay their rent. Some of the pastors collect salary. So I can teach you all kinds of things and immediately after the service, my dinner is secured. I'm going to go and eat. But will you eat? A good shepherd does not march on his sheep. He lays down his life for his sheep. You see, this is why many congregations are, um, is a beehive of frustrated people. There are issues people have that will not allow them to grow. Number three, every true shepherd should teach people and guide them along the area of excellence in leadership. How to excel career-wise, how to excel family-wise. Every church, every congregation is a unit of family. You cannot have an irresponsible father, a very wicked mother, come to a church. What do you think that bad father will become as a HOD? He will translate his understanding about fatherhood. And that's what he's going to use to lead the department. Are we together now? Every arm robber came from somewhere. He didn't fall from a tree. Are we together? Every prostitute or harlot came from somewhere. All those who are making a mess of society came from family. And a platform like this, the church is an institution that influences the mindset of people. Gives them very, very scriptural perspectives on leadership. How do you excel in your place of work? It matters to God. How do you excel in your endeavor? It matters to God. How do you excel in your business? How do you do it right? Number what now? Number four. Every pastor must teach his congregation on principles of relationships. Relationships are everything in this kingdom. 
your breakthrough comes through relationships the tragedy in your life comes through relationships jesus understood this he didn't he didn't play with relationships we lose opportunities because we do not know how to master relationships we lose destiny help us money is not everything as important as it is one ability to maximize a quality relationship will give you what one billion will not give you relationships hallelujah number five every pastor must be able to teach his congregation how to be agents of national transformation every pastor must be able to teach his member life applicable teachings teachings they can take outside of the confines of the church back to society and begin to shape cultures and change systems with it listen let me tell you the churches that command influence in every territory are the churches whose impact are felt even sociologically it's not just by buying rice or giving people sewing machine or or you know uh, buying pot or killing cow those things are important but it's not just about doing things it's about institutionalizing a mindset within a territory so the church becomes noted everybody within that territory benefits there are so many people benefiting from koinonia the national union of road transport workers are benefiting rental services benefiting mtn glow airtel benefiting are we together now there are many people who may not be christians but will fight to protect the continuity of koinonia because they can see how it translates to the well-being of their own lives so you build Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.